And uh, of course, we have to make this clear that, that Israel uh, predates any uh, Palestinian uh, connections here to this land. When you look at the name of Palestine, it was the name that the Romans gave to the land formerly known as Judea. Now, I didn't say Jewish or uh, Judaism, but Judea. So the Judeans were the people that actually lived in this portion of this land prior to the uh, it being named Palestine by the Romans. So this is what we consider to be Northeast Africa. We are sitting on the African tectonic plate. There are African species of birds and animals and, and plants that you'll find all throughout this region. Why I took you here is that I want to show you that the country called Israel is sitting on the African tectonic plate. It's like all continents are sitting on a plate, okay? Mm -hmm. And these plates, sometimes they slide, in, you know, and they rub one another and see, and what happens, that's what happens when earthquakes happen. The plates begin to slide among one, uh, one another. And if you get a crack in one of the plates, magma will come up, you know, like a volcano. Mm -hmm. a, a magnum would come up and it will cause, you know, uh, great devastation because of the volcano, but it's because of the shifting of these tectonic plates. Uh, without question, we are in Northeast Africa. We are landlocked to Egypt with the exception of the Suez Canal, which was a man-made uh, ditch, a boundary now uh, between, in fact, it's not even really a boundary anymore since uh, Egypt has reclaimed the Sinai Peninsula. Uh, but nevertheless, even those of us who are Pan-Africanists in our thinking and Afrocentric, we forget and we leave off that portion of Northeast Africa and, and, and don't want to claim anything beyond that. Of course, Afro, uh, Afrocentrists are still fighting tooth and nail for Egypt to be included as a part of Africa because most Egyptologists and anthropologists, archaeologists of the Eurocentric persuasion will say that uh, Egypt is in Africa. They had to concede that, but then they still draw the line by saying that uh, they weren't Africans like that. In other words, they weren't dark-skinned people. And of course, this is all part of the great deception. And the reality is that if they give up Egypt, ancient Egypt, ancient Kemet, if, if they give that up and say that that was a part of black Africa, then they will also have to give up Israel. And that's why they draw the line at Egypt, because if they give up Egypt, they've got to give up Israel. Now, we're going to go over here and I'm going to show you where Israel sits on the African tectonic plate, which means that Israel is Northeast Africa. Now, when we look at this map, this is the, this is the Sinai, okay? This is the Red Sea. This is Egypt. This is the Sinai. This is Israel, all right? And this is Saudi Arabia over here. Now, if you see this in Hebrew, it says Haluak Afrikani, the African plate. Here it is right here. Israel is sitting right here. Israel is sitting on the Haluak Afrikani, which means that Israel is North East Africa. There is no, uh, there is no Middle East area. If you sit here in Israel, you have a border with Egypt. So Egypt is in Africa. So how I can say this is Middle East? Uh, to me it's uh, Africa land. Blacks from Africa back to home and also from Africa, from here we've been there. And uh, also for most of the blacks they have a confusion about Israel. This is your home. This is your land. I start from zero to know who am I. After that, I hear uh, from uh, the cousins, I am, a, I am a Jewish, I have a full right to come in Israel. I am sitting here 22 years. So from my Bible also, you learn most of the history and the Bible, of the, the, the prophets or the peoples inside the Bible, they are not blondes or blue eyes. They are, they are looks like me or looks like you. So I believe this is the land of Africa. So in your eyes, this land, the Holy Land, what they call Israel, Palestine, this is Africa? 
This is Africa. This is Africa. The Europeans, I mean, because we know the Europeans classify this as the Middle East. But this is Africa. This is Africa. This is north of Africa. Now they make Libya and um, Morocco and Tunis. They say it's North Africa. It's West. <laughs> the West. We are in the North. This is the Mediterranean Sea right here. So, people say, well, why do you say, but it's Asia Minor? You know, when Europeans be talking about this Asia Minor, I ask them, where's Europe Minor? Where's America Minor? Okay, this is the only <laughs> continent with a minor. And you know what that minor is? It's a minor lie. It's really a major lie. <laughs> Understand what you're talking about? Some Asia Minor. Where's Europe Minor? Where's America Minor? But see, when they say Asia Minor, they don't have to classify this land as being part of the African continent. And they want to call it the Middle East. The middle of what? Okay? The only reason why they call this the Middle East is because people here in England, when they would come down into the Mediterranean Sea, and go through the Suez Canal, go into the Red Sea, and go to the Far East, go to China. They were saying they was in the middle of their journey. We've done a great job in being able to demonstrate that, that this is Northeast Africa. And once we begin to look at it as such, and we stop believing this idea of Israel being a part of the Middle East. What do you mean Middle East? Is there an Upper East, a Lower East? What, what do you mean Middle East? It's a geopolitical term that the British, our good friends the British, that they uh, used during their reign and their uh, uh, dominion, which has long since passed. The, long, the sun has long set on the British Empire. They no longer rule the seven seas, but they, in their world, in their worldview, they called this region the Middle East. And it made sense in that perspective because going to their east, when they got as far as they could to their east, and they, they call that the Far East. And to this day, it's still called the Philippines, China, Asia, or Far East Asia, whatever. So when you look at going to those regions and passing through this region, passing through Syria, passing through Israel, passing through Egypt, passing through Afghanistan, Iran, etc., it made sense according to their worldview to call this the Middle East. It was the middle of their East. But no longer will a geopolitical term suffice for what we're saying is geological and geographical truth. Europeans classified this area as a Middle East. You know, and then since this is the Middle East, the other question, where the Middle West? Where the Middle North and where the Middle South? They don't have no geographical terms like that. And the only reason why they use that term, Middle East, because it disconnects the proper connotation that should go with describing this land geographically. So to me, what I understood also I learned in Ethiopia what is the geography of Africa and the Middle East, automatically I uh, feel like Africa. So even now, after 22 years, I saw the culture, I saw the uh, meal, you know, most of there is no Middle East culture. All of these things came from Africa and also from this culture or originally from here, from this land, from Jerusalem. And uh, now uh, to, to see the things properly Africa, not Middle East. So let the truth speak for itself. It's not my interpretation. Here it is in Hebrew. This is written in Hebrew. And in Hebrew that says... This says Luaka Afrikani, the African tectonic plate. That's where Israel is sitting on. Mm -hmm. Okay? And then over here at this map, they show you where the whole earth was called Pangaea. Okay? This is when all the continents was together. All right? The whole earth was called Pangaea? Yeah. What does that mean in Hebrew? Pangaea is like... Uh, so Pangaea, that was the name for the whole earth? Yeah, that was like, but that's a Greek name. That's not, uh, got nothing to do with Hebrew. But then what they said, and this is true, the continents begin to pull apart. Asia pulled apart. Africa 
of South uh, America and North America. Now, if you look at the continents, look at South America and Africa. You can just bring them back together and they will fit like a puzzle. The Mediterranean Sea was created by these continents pulling apart. And that's what I'm telling you about those tectonic plates. Those tectonic plates pulled apart. So that's when the Earth everything was one. Absolutely. I like a little baby. Because remember. I like a little baby, right? Right. See, like a, like a person. It, you know what? Now, I've been coming looking at this all the time. I, first, I do look like a little baby. Like there's the head, there's the feet, yeah, yeah, the like, legs, and the body. It's like a little baby still. Now, remember, like God said, in the womb. let there be, huh? It's like a little baby in the womb, where it's around. Absolutely. So what we have to understand is that in the, in the beginning of the creation, God said, let there be land. The land, okay, it wasn't divided. It was one. Mm -hmm. All right? But when you begin to have these tectonic plates pull away, then this is what you have today. These different continents. That's, that's Asia. So Asia. And this is Africa. That's South America and North America. But if you look at them, you can just push them back together. And guess what? They're still moving apart. Mm -hmm. Right now as we speak it. Mm -hmm. So I hope the listening audience understand that we're talking fact here. This is not my interpretation. Truth it's going to liberate us from being separated as a people. Truth is going to liberate us from thinking that we are scientifically intelligent and we don't have enough common sense to not even stop destroying our own environment. How can you destroy that which we depend upon to exist? I want to say I'm sorry that my English is not so good, but <laughs> I will try, you know, to explain or to to teach the people, the people that don't know that we are here in this land before uh, maybe uh, maybe more in uh, 2000 of year in this area uh, in Sinai Desert. It's, uh, it's not far from here, it's near the Jordan-Israeli border. There is our land, my land, my grandfather's land. So, uh, so before, you know, before maybe, before the, the state of Israel, the border of this Israel or Palestine is not in this, in this border today. It's very near, before it's El Arish. El Arish in Egypt today, there is the border of this the holy the holy land. This is the religion thing. So many people they don't know that uh, the black people here in this land, it's it's not uh, for the last hundred years or something like this. It's more than uh, a thousand of years. Africa. He's from Africa. Ah, Saba, and we are ten Yes, the road. Ten generations here. Bobby, Israel, Haita Palestine, Haita Lithuania, Turkey, Lithuania, Turkey, Malachi. before the Palestinian, before the Turkish Empire, his people was here. We was a small family. Ayom anachnu mishpacha yesh ba shvam od gever. Seven hundred men in his community now. Six hundred women right here in his family. This is family, personal family. This is not his friend. The original people here, it was black. I know about the hostel of Pini Hilal. Uh, I know about the Zir Salem uh, history. Everybody knows this. Uh, most of the, the Bedouin here, most of them, they come from the Arab Gulf. Uh, they know. They, they can know they, they're not original here. They know that we are the original uh, people here in this land. The evidence is hands down. Uh, it's not even something that we engage in a debate on about the, the dark-skinned uh, nature of the peoples that lived in these regions in antiquity. The reality is that we tend to look at this land based on what we've seen in contemporary times. And what do we see? Uh, we see uh, fair-skinned Israelis 
and we see fair-skinned Arabs. I'm here, I'm here.